Hey guys, Boogly here. Today I have a video for you highlighting the settings that I use in Battlefield 4. Now to start off with my sensitivity, I run a 14% in-game with 400 DPI for my mouse and then 6 out of 11 window sensitivity. This equates to be about a 38 centimeter 360, so I have to move my mouse 38 centimeters across my mouse pad to be able to do a 360 degree spin in-game. Now, I find this to be a really balanced sensitivity, so I have the ability to shoot and kind of recoil range, but still have the ability to turn on someone in close quarters really quickly. Now, for my vehicle sensitivity, that's at 41%. These are actually calculated out to be the same. I used an online calculator, so that way I have the same aim for like my uh, infantry, my vehicle, and even other games too, like Battlefield 3, Counter-Strike, Call of Duty. I use it so I have the same sensitivity in every game. Now, raw mouse input, I have this on to help reduce uh, or help avoid mouse acceleration. The rest of the settings is not that important. Then uniform soldier aiming, I have this on. This setting allows you to have the same sensitivity when you aim down sights versus your hip fire. So let's say I have to move so much with my hip fire sensitivity, when I aim down sights it'll be the exact same. Now with that setting off, especially if you're a BF3 veteran, it, what it does with the setting off, you have a lower sensitivity when you aim down sights, which you have like two different sensitivities. And that's how it was in BF3 where you aim down sights you have lower sense. So yeah, I like to have it on just for muscle memory. Now, under the advanced options, you do not want to mess with any of these unless you actually know what you're doing. These can mess up with mess up your sensitivity to all your different scopes. So if you really want to get in like customization for like your ACOG, your ADEX, your red dot, all that, you can mess with this, but I do not recommend that. Under the gameplay tab, a lot of these settings are default or personal preference, like the weapon zoom, hold versus toggle, things like that. But things like reload hint, hint system, tutorials, I have all those on off or hidden, so that way they don't pop up in game and distracting me on screen. Under the advanced tab, uh, this is basically a, uh, a modified version of X Factors, one that he made for his config. And the most important thing in this tab, have your network, network smoothing factor on zero, and have your high frequency network updates on, on on. Now what that does, it gives you an accurate representation of where your enemies are, where if you have like, if you have like the tick rate set lower and then you have your um, your network shooting factor like 100%. The animations look smooth, but when you're, shooting, when you're shooting the enemy, it's not lining up where they actually are at that moment. Like, it just, it'll just be out of sync. You want this to be like this, that way it's more in sync with the game and you have a much easier time being able to hit your targets. Now, here's just the rest of the settings if you want to copy these down. Like I said, they're a modified version of X-Factors, just my personal preference. Under the audio tab, the only thing that matters here would be the speaker type. Now, the two I'd recommend Either, are either headphones or war tapes. I use war tapes so I can hear sounds like gun reloading, people throwing grenades, running around in water, jumping. Basically a lot of the smaller sounds are more amplified with war tapes so that way I can hear just where my enemies are more easily. Otherwise if you don't like this sound or this uh, type of uh, audio, another one I recommend would be headphones. So those are the only two that I recommend. Under the video tab, now I run at 120 hertz. Yes, my monitor is a 144Hz monitor, but I cannot maintain a constant 144 frames. I would prefer to maintain a lower frame rate, but with no drops versus trying to achieve like a higher frame rate of like 144, but I'll drop down to like 120, 130. Because when it drops, there's a little bit of a stutter and you, I can find that quite annoying. So one rule of thumb that I like to do is I like to cap my frame rate right one above my refresh rate. So I'm running at 120Hz, but I cap my FPS at 121. Now, brightness, um, you generally want this to be higher so you don't have issues with people hiding in dark corners. Vertical sync, I have that off to avoid uh, mouse input lag. Now, field of view, this is personal preference. I prefer a lower field of view with the scaling on, so that way my hip fire and ADS field of view match along like where I have my sensitivities match, I have my FOV match as well. But one thing to be aware about this, this uh, setting, if you have the scaling on and then you turn the, your FOV up to the max, the game looks really nice, like you have this massive like fishbowl effect, you look like you're running really fast. But the issue is, let's say I were to go shoot a wall, it looks like I barely have any recoil on my gun. But when you, in reality, if you were to turn this down, and then you were to shoot that wall, you can see that there's a lot of recoil there that you just weren't seeing with the higher FOV, because it zooms out on your screen. So you can make it look like you have less recoil, but you're not being that accurate. So anything above 80, I don't recommend having the uh, FOV scaling on. Now for things like motion blur, weapon DOF, I like to have those off or like at 0% so I just like less blur on my screen. Resolution scale is personal preference, or actually no, resolution scale you want it to be 100% unless you're having uh, performance issues. Now open screen adjust, 
I have this set to the lowest it can go in game, so that way things like my mini map, my ammo counter, things like that are a lot more centered. So I, I just prefer it that way. For my graphics settings, I have all of them on lower off. That way, I can achieve the highest frame rate possible. Along with Battlefield is an amazing looking game. I it's amazing, but I do not like all the clutter that it has to come with it. Where you have the particle effects, the really fancy textures. A lot of those things, it looks really nice, but it causes issues where uh, it just it distracts me in game, or it can, it can be distracting in game. So I prefer to have it all on like lower off, not only for the FPS boost, just less distracting. Now keybinds. For my keybinds, I have all my keybinds uh, default, except I have um, my forward mouse button with my thumb is my primary secondary toggle. My mouse button back is my grenade. And then I used to have my scroll wheel forward, my scroll wheel back, and my gadgets, but my Zowie FK1 has a, uh, a scroll wheel issue. So I use three for my head. gadget one and four for my gadget two. Another setting I have is uh, if you click down my middle mouse, I have the full mini map. That way I can bring up the entire map to get a uh, better... I can assess the situation uh, much easier versus the uh, small mini map within the bottom left hand corner. And for things like my uh, vehicle keybinds. I am no vehicle expert, I just occasionally do vehicles from time to time. But my tank, uh, especially with my, well, my ground vehicle, is or my ground vehicle settings are basically default with the exception of I have my switch weapon and my countermeasures uh, tied to my thumb buttons and my mouse. And then in jets, I am not a jet pilot. I have flown jets very, like, I have barely any jet time. But these are settings I've copied down from my friend Oogly, who is a very skilled jet pilot. And you can just look at these if you want to copy them down. The only things that really stand out are, like, my throttle up and my afterburner are tied to the same key. I have my pitch down, which technically is pitch up, tied to my spacebar. So I can have a constant input in a dogfight, so I don't have to worry about using the mouse, picking it up. So I can have a constant input when I'm turning. Um, other things I have like uh, things bound to my mouse, uh, my thumb buttons, my mouse for like countermeasures, switching weapons, things like that. And basically, I copied my jet settings over to my helicopter, with the exception of there's no afterburner in the helicopter. Otherwise, they're all the same. So yeah, that's all my uh, in-game settings. Now I'll cover a few things I do to my PC to help optimize my computer. All right, now besides the basic overclocking and things like that you can do to a PC, a few of the things I like to do. One is to unpark my CPU cores, especially for like Windows 7, Windows 8. Parking cores, what it does is it can limit kind of like capping your processor to an extent. And if you unpark it, it gives you the, uh, it gives your processor much more potential to be able to be utilized more, if that makes any sense. So I'll have like the links down to this in the description. It's a really utility to use. Um, yeah. And the other thing I like to run is the Mark C Windows mouse fix. Now this fixes any mouse acceleration you have with Windows, for either Windows 7 and Windows 8. And yeah, so you have to set your Windows since you'll be at 6 out of 11, disable the quote unquote enhanced pointer precision, and then run this fix. And then along with that, for Battlefield, I make a uh, config file. Basically where you go, you go into your um, Battlefield folder, you right click, create a new document, you put in the commands, you save it as a uh, user.config, and is all file types, and you create this little config file here. Now I'll post this down in the description. It's very basic. I used to have a more complex one, but uh, I've just gone back to using the very basics where I cap my FPS, I have the FPS overlay, and I have a few things here that uh, I just have set to zero or like the shadow map resolution. Basically just a few things. So that's down in the description. Um, yeah, that is everything I do to optimize my PC while playing Battlefield 4. So uh, thanks for watching.